Alhamdulillah. Okay. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let's do our dua first for class. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi fi kulli lahadatin abada ala ni'amillahi wa abdalihi Allahumma atina min ladunka rahma wa alimna min ladunka ilma subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana إنك أنت العليم الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نوانا تعلم وتعني متذكر وتذكير النفع والانتفاع والفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني وما شرب سفي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني وما شرب سفي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني وما شرب سفي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم ألهمنا علم نفقه به أمرك ونواهيك ورزقنا فهم نعرف به كيف نجيك يا رحم الرحيم اللهم إنا نسألك فهم النبي وحفظ المرسلين وإلهام الملائكة المقربين في عافية يا رحم الرحيم اللهم أغننا بالعلم وزيننا بالحلم وأكرمنا بالتقوى وجملنا بالعافية يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إنا نستودعك ما قرأناه وما نقرأه في هذا المجلس وما قبله وما بعده فاحفظه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت احتياجنا إليه يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا معلم إبراهيم علمنا ويا مفخم سليمان فهمنا ويا مؤذي داود الحكمة آتنا الحكمة وأصلحنا اللهم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وافتح لنا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا حكمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا من مقاليد الأمور كلها بيده وإليه يرجع, يرجع العمر كله يا فتاح يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم افتح علينا فتحا قريبا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وسدد لساني وهد قلبي وافعل كذلك بأحبابي أبدا ورزقنا كمال فتوح العارفين والفقه في الدين مع كمال الإخلاص والصدق واليقين والعافية والغنى والنصر والحفظ والنفع والانتفاع وخيرة الدارين وعلوم الأولين والآخرين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إنتي ما ستايلس ستايلس إس إن إس إن سيوا كابر إن ما سيوا بوف سيوا بات ستايلس سيوا كابر هزول هزول لابتوب أوكي كاي كي دروبين So the best cover for my stylus oh. is a stewart cover. If I keep dropping it, then it keeps spoiling. <laughs> so, inshallah. Okay, so now. So the kids are like, why is there the whole laptop all over your stewart? Because <laughs> it's the stylus for my laptop. So now. Okay. 
Okay, Sunda. Um, I want to do an overview first. Right? So, so every every week we come to these classes, right? We will do the um, basically to, to 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 orient it ourselves eh, as to what we are doing, and then um, I will answer. I'll go to the questions first from last week, right? and then um, we'll break for Aisha. By the time the Aisha, da. Right? so break for Aisha, and then we'll come back and I'll do the lesson for today. Right? Inshallah for this week lah. This is for this week. All right. So basically, this entire this is to just 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 to bring things together. Eh? To bring things together. All right. This entire um, series of lessons, they just, the, the, they just like an seriously uh, uh, just beginning, right? The, you know, our, our path in in in, um, you say I don't tackling the end of times, right? In tackling the end of times, in facing the end of times, right? It's just beginning the path. But even then, right at the beginning of the path, it's already hard. <laughs> right, so and I need and we need to do this um this this summary every week, you know, to, 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 to bring our thoughts together. So it's not all over the place. Right? And there is a focus, there's a direction, right, and there is improvement, inshallah. Right? There's, there's a whole point. Right? This is, as last week I mentioned, my, my biggest fear is that we, we talk about all these things and then nothing's done. <laughs> and there's no improvement, there are no changes. Right? You go back to what, what, what things were before the cause. As if the cause nothing happened right, in between. Right, so the entire reason why we're going through all of these, um, you know, discussions, and, and, and it's, it's all it's in, in, in a structure, right? It's in a structure that we are um, doing. So basically, right, we began speaking about the ruh, right? The, the, the soul of a person. Right? This is basically what we are to preserve. This is our, this is our, like our goal, lah, you can see. Our ruh. Our, I, I, say, I, I meant gold there, eh? not goal. Eh? <laughs> gold. <laughs> inside the gold that's inside of us. Right, so the most precious thing that Allah has entrusted us with is our ruh. Right, that is our. That is what is precious, you know, to us. You know, mashallah, This past week, I had to um, explain um, to the preschoolers that I teach about what is a ruh. What's a ruh? I had to explain to them the concept of ruh. Because <laughs> right, I mean, so, so mashallah, you know, it's fresh to them. Like, the, what is what is a ruh? What is your ruh? Do you have a ruh? You have a roh, right? Do I have roh? I have roh. Does the ki- did, did cat have a roh? <laughs> Do cats have roh? <laughs> Do cats have arwah? No, they don't have arwah. <laughs> cats have no arwah. Uh, human beings. Human beings have arwah. Right, so the roh is uh, what is, what is um, uh, precious right, to the human being. What is the agenda? Last, it, was, it, was, it was last week's classes. Eh? The agenda of the time or the agenda of the end of time. Right? What is it headed towards? Right, and then I'm gonna use I'm gonna use black. Eh? So basically, I, it is to, it is to. So so what is what what the row is being attacked by, right? By the time. Okay, right to to bring the row to a destruction, right? A destruction, in. Destruction, in belief and uh, in aqidah. And this, all this is all from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's no one's theory. It's not theory. It's revealed knowledge. Okay, it's from the Prophet himself. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? And this is from what we understand from Hadith Jibril. A destruction in Aqidah, right? And morals. Right? A destruction in Aqidah and in morals. Right? And you say, you know, and, 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 we, and, and, and we say, but I thought, you know, the, 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 fourth, it is the, the fourth question that Jibril was, that Jibril asked Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or you mean, meaning the fifth question that Jibril asked Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right, was, um, you know, uh, what are the signs of the hour? Right? And from there we got the, the it's, a, it's, it's a lagas, right? meaning it's like a riddle. It's like a riddle. Right, so when he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that you will see a woman, uh, a, you know, a slave girl give birth to her master or to her mistress, right, from here, um, he pulled out that this is actually a principle right, of a destruction of aqidah and education. Right? And when he says education, what he means is morals. Because what is education except to, bring, except to develop moral and upright human beings? That's the whole purpose of education. The whole purpose of education is not for you to earn money. <laughs> right, in our time, it has come to that. Right, education, when, when, no, and, and we, and we are told from a very young age, we are told study hard now, things will get easier for you later on. Meaning, you get a high-paying job. 
Right? So from a very young age, we already drilled into our heads, study hard now, knowledge is for you to earn more money. Right? Basically, from a very young age, this has been, um, this has been uh, uh, drilled into our heads. Whereas in, in the Islamic, in the Islamic um, view, Right, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. In the Islamic, <laughs> in the Islamic view, oh wait, wait, wait. my audio is uh, is affected. Yeah, <laughs> now it's so sensitive nowadays. Whenever something atta- uh, attaches itself to my computer, straight away I lose audio. Yeah. Yeah. How do you connect it? Mm, I just on it actually. I don't think it's connected. Wait there. Bismillah, Bismillah. Okay. My, my, I'm so sorry. My, my, today the entire day, my laptop, my laptop, my laptop, my laptop <laughs> has been acting up. I don't know why the entire day today. Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. Yeah, I know, I know you all cannot hear me. <laughs> I can see, I can see that my audio is not connected. <laughs> but I can't do anything about it because my laptop is doing this. Okay. Why you move my mouse? I'm trying to do it, you move my mouse. Masa, masa, masa. See, like, it will, keep, it will keep doing this, you know. Can you move, not do that. It will keep, it will keep doing this. So I don't know what to do. The whole day today, it was, it was just, it was just in and out, in and out, in and out. Allah. Allahumma salli wa salli wa barik alayhi wa ala alayhi You know what? If it keeps doing this Okay, bismillah, bismillah, bismillah okay. You know what? Eh? Read it again If it keeps doing this I You sign in With your phone In the Zoom And then my voice goes directly to your phone But I'll leave the, 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 the camera on lah. Okay yeah, yeah. Anyone's, anyone's phone. Connect to the Wi-Fi. Connect to the Wi-Fi. Connect to the Wi-Fi. See, it's a bit. I don't know why it's getting. It's getting very, very, very. Um. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I <laughs> Bismillah. Bismillah. Okay. Bismillah. Okay. Okay. Bismillah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ah, ya Allah, Ya Rabbi. Bismillah, 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 Bismillah. Bismillah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna um, go in from 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 the phone, so that my voice goes in from the phone. Yeah, but now the. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna um, go okay. in from from. Okay, now, now now it seems okay. So that Bismillah. Okay, but just you stand by lah. You stand by. You sign in. You sign in. Then in case my audio acts up again, then I will just use the phone lah. Inshallah. Okay. You want to mute me? <laughs> Disconnect from the audio. Yeah, disconnect from the audio. Okay. Okay, alhamdulillah. So, afwan, afwan. Uh, the, whole, the whole day today is my, my test. Lah, eh? <laughs> my, my laptop, the audio keeps breaking off. And then when I use my tab, the internet keeps breaking off. So, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Something's going on. And eh? they're stopping the, <laughs> trying to stop the classes. <laughs> alhamdulillah. Okay, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, so we, I can't remember where, where, where I was, where I was, where I was speaking about. Alright, so, so basically, we see the end, the, 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 the end goal, right? The end goal of the evil system that we are in in the end of times, right? And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the one who pointed us to this, right? He pointed us that this is an end goal, right? It's good, the, 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 what, what, what the Dajjalic system is going to do, or the end of times is going to do, is bring people to destruction, Right, in their belief system and in their morals, and we're seeing this right now. You know, we're seeing this right now. Right, so so you know, it, um, uh, in a sense, physical harm and physical damage, 
right, while it is something that we want to protect ourselves and our young ones from, right, it's not as severe as spiritual harm and spiritual damage. And that is when you have a disruption in the aqidah and the morals. You see that. Right, so when we speak about the, the harm to the end of times, you will see that there are certain things that I, that I don't speak about. Uh, because these things, um, they focus more on the um, physical aspect right, of, of, of human beings, uh, more than the spiritual aspect. Right? So what we're looking at right now is what is precious is our ruh. So that was, that was the first week. The first week of lessons focused a lot on the ruh because before we speak about the, the dangers, we need to speak about what's in danger. Right? What is being threatened here? And how is it being threatened? That was last week. How is the ruh being threatened? Right? So these this harms and dangers, what they're doing is they're bringing, they're bringing the, um, the ruh into a destruction Right? In, 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 in terms of his aqidah and his morals, because this will bring it into permanent destruction. Right? Permanent meaning everlasting right? in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. Okay, then today's lesson. So last week, so last week, Allahumma sallallahu Muhammad. So last week, um, when we spoke about. Okay. <laughs> Bismillah. Bismillah. I'm so nervous about the audio <laughs> acting out on me. Okay, Suna. All right. <laughs> Okay, um, now, right, so last week we spoke about um, how, right, how our, how Akida and morals have been destroyed <laughs> in our time. So today, right, so how in the sense, sense, you know, what has happened to the Akida of, of Muslims and what has, happened to, what has happened to the morality of Muslims and how it has gone from Muslims taking the word of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, uh, and the Quran to be standards of morals, right? To now they are taking, all, they're consuming all kinds of um, information, and and taking these things as standards of morality, you know, Subhanallah. And how they are beginning to also question the aqidah that has been told us, uh, that has been told to us by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this is basically a study, right? Because people wonder, you know, how come you know in the past our grandparents, you know, our grandparents they don't have all these issues, right? Because they were not attacked in this way. Uh, in our time, and today we're going to show how, right, to, 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 to know how to, to protect yourself, to defend yourself, you need to know what are the, what, 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 what are the weapons that are being used against you. And how are you going to protect yourself? You don't know, right, what is, you know what, what they're doing towards you. you know, subhanallah. So like for example, you know, if someone's going out into warfare, for example, eh, right, and, and, and they say they're going to wear the, 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 the heaviest armor, they're going to wear you know, um, uh, a full suit you know, of, of armory, and they go into a battle, and the battle is biochemical, um, <laughs> is biochemical for example. Right? It's, it's biochemical attacks. So what does your armor have to do with that? Okay? Your armor is useless, correct? Because you don't understand the attack. Now, if you understand the attack, you know how to defend. Right, so today, right, we're going to understand the attacks. Right? So we know, we know how the, the biochemicals have hurt us. We know how it has hurt us. And how we are seeing it right now. We're seeing it. If you're not seeing it, then, then, then please see it. Right? You have to be completely blind spiritually. Right? A person has to be completely blind spiritually. And unfortunately, more and more people are getting there. Uh, 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 more and more people are being spiritually blind. Mashallah. I need to put a permanent uh, mute eh? okay. Inshallah. Right, more and more people are becoming it's unfortunate. They're getting more and more spiritually blind. Right, so they can't even see right, that there is chemical attacks or, or by chemical, uh, they can't even see that there being that there has been attacks you know, on the Muslim Ummah. Not just on the Muslim Ummah, but on human on humanity at large. Right, because when we speak about the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we speak about the Ummah that has been called and those who are, who are in the fold of Islam, and we speak about the ummah that are to be called, like those who have not yet come into the fold of Islam. Right, they're all the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, the ummah that has already been called, those who have said the shahada already, and the ummah that has yet to be called. Right, they're still the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they are called you know, the, 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 the ummah al 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 madu or the da'wah. The da'wah is supposed to reach these people and right, for them to to, bring, to to pull them into the circle of Islam. They're all under the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a mercy to the end of times, right, he gave direction and guidance um, uh, for all of his ummah, those in the circle of Islam and those outside the circle of Islam. 
Right? Whatever he has taught us benefits all. Right? all every human being on this earth. Right? Muslim and non-Muslim. Subhanallah. Because even the non-Muslims are seeing this. Right? And so while, while there are all these you know, evil um, agents out there pushing the degradation or destruction of, 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 of morality, right? they, have, they have destroyed the entire thing about spirituality already. Right? They have, they have, they have, you know, what they have done is that they have, laid, they, have, they have brought spirituality or any form of religiosity down so low Right, the, the, anybody who holds on to you know uh, uh, who holds on to, to structured religion uh, is seen as someone who is backward, as seen as someone who uh, as, as people who don't understand, who don't think, who don't whatever. They have done that already in our time, right? and so-called you know, liberation and so and, and so-called um, uh, uh, progress right, is to leave behind all this, you know, like superstitious ideas and hocus pocus and whatsoever right, that, that that religion speaks about. About the hereafter, about hell, the hellfire, about God, about the unseen, lah, basically. It's all about the unseen. We spoke about this yesterday during Sirah. Right? Imam Rambuti speaks, uh, spoke about this. Uh, he pointed to it. And this is what happened. So basically, so we know what is precious, what we're what we guarding over. We know what is the end result. And what is the, what is the goal of the time in, in, uh, in, in what, what, what it's trying to do to the ruh. Right, to bring the roh to destruction in aqidah and morals is the end result. So now, what brings it there? Right, how is the roh pushed uh, into this very, very sickly and very sad and almost dying position that the roh has come into? And unfortunately, many human beings are there right now right, because the war began since they were born. Right. Since they were born, they bombarded, 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 bombarded. And now, even at a young age, how many children already? They're the, the roh crying out. And, and adults, even worse. They're the roh crying out. You know, subhanallah. Right. So now, is the weapons. And what are the weapons that's being used in our time? So now here you put the weapons there. Eh? Why is he doing that? Right. Weapons of... Mass, mass distraction. <laughs> they call it mass distraction, right? Uh, weapons of um, raw uh, destruction. Right, so how they how they aim to destroy the ruh, right? Uh, before the ruh, before the ruh uh, leaves this world. Okay. And then next week, uh, how do we um, uh, pr protect ourselves, right, pro against these weapons against the ruh? All right. Alhamdulillah. So, Tamsminah. Eh? Right. So last week we were. Where were we? Okay. Am I sharing the correct thing? Yeah. I am. Sorry. Um. Allahumma salli ala sidda Muhammad. Okay. So last week we spoke about this uh, hadith Jibril. Right. We spoke about the. Okay, we were actually here. I didn't finish last week's um, discussion. <laughs> right, so much to talk about you know, from last week. So I didn't even finish how morality and, and, and aqidah has been destroyed right, in our time. Which is important to know how, you know, to, 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 to know the end result. To know the end result, then you know how dangerous these weapons are. Right, if you don't know the end result, this is how you have people dismissing the weapons. Like you tell them, this is dangerous. Don't give to your kid. Don't give, you yourself should stay away from it. Uh, it's hurting you. That, nah, it's not that bad. Nah, it's not that bad. And here you see Habib Umar's, um, I'm going to come back to this slide in a while. Right, but basically, here, this statement, eh, about Habib Umar. Right, this is what he's, he's pointing us to. Right, people don't realize how serious the weapons are. Right, they, they, they don't realize. Right, and, and, and you know what? The weapons will always be disguised as beneficial. Right? They will always be disguised as something that you need. You need this. It's good for you. You know, subhanAllah. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a very clear principle. Allah says in the Quran, and they ask you about alcohol and gambling right? in Surah Baqarah. And they ask you, O Muhammad, about alcohol and gambling. Say, in it, there is some benefit. Some Right? But the harm, and also harm, and the harm far outweighs the benefit right? that, that can be found in uh, alcohol and gambling. And in fact, whatever benefit you can find in alcohol can be found somewhere else. Right? That is completely pure. 
Right, so this is basically our response to anyone who says, and I'm going to go through the weapons, who say, but this, but this is not a weapon, it's beneficial. Right? I need to show this to my family, I need to bring this to my family, I need to bring this to my children, I need to, you know, we need to have it in our household, we need it. Right? It's beneficial. Right? And, then, and then you say, what's the benefit? And they say, well, you know, expense your idea. What idea? <laughs> That's to, to be expended where? On what? Is it being guided? Is it being, is it being um, controlled? Right? Are you in control? Right? Or are you being... Um, uh, or are, are, are you in control? Or are you being controlled? Right? Subhanallah. But it, but it takes clear-sightedness. Basira. It takes clear-sightedness and a purity of heart and a sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see the evil as they are. Right, so, so in his statement, what he says here, some parents give their children mobile phones saying that there are some benefits to it. <laughs> and he says, very, simple, very simply, he says, he says, he puts out very clearly to, to the people. There are also benefits to knives. <laughs> knives also have benefits. You can cut things with knives, right? <laughs> and then, but when your child cries and begs for a knife, you will, say, you will very confidently say, cry all day, you're not getting it. Right? But when it comes to the mobile phone... People want to be merciful. What if my child is left out? What if my child doesn't know what's going on in school? What if my child, what if my child... They keep asking, they keep asking for it. But if you see this as a weapon, a very serious weapon, that the moment they touch it, uh, it begins to consume them. Uh, if you, and it, you know what? It's consuming us. Right? No, it's talking about them. Eh? Uh, we are also being consumed right, by this. So it's not even, not even, not even, not even them. It's refreshing to actually not have it. <laughs> Subhanallah. In Darul Zahra, none of the girls have it. And they, they, they only get it uh, once a month. And they only get their phone once a month. Eh? And even then, they're supposed to get it. They're not supposed to get it. Um, but when they come to, they come to, see, to the, the Tarim, they put their smartphones with the Singaporeans who live outside. Right? And they go to the hostel. So then when, when they come up once a month, they come to our houses and they use their phones. They're not supposed to. <laughs> they're not supposed to. Right, but they do. Because why? Addiction. Addiction. And also, but also they want to, to contact their family. But actually, you know what? Those who are here who are Dara Dara girls, I don't know how many people here are Dara Dara girls. Honestly, eh, the connecting the family is only like a few, like about half an hour. <laughs> Done already. What else you talk about? Right? And what happened? What happened? What happened? You know, oh, someone got married, okay. Um, <laughs> right? And then the rest of the time, what? Facebook, Instagram, you know, all I got. The rest of the time is it's just it's going back to your social media. Basically, that's, that's what it is. You know, subhanAllah. So anyway, he says here, but when it comes to the mobile phone, you want to be merciful so the child can love you. Is a way by which we buy their affection, their love. You know, it's a way whereby it's, it's a very simple, it's a very easy way of babysitting. Right? It is, it is a, an easy way, especially in this world whereby, you know what, they tire you out. They exhaust you. I mean, and it's true. I mean, we speak about it. Eh? They exhaust you. And it's one of the things I'm going to speak about today, about the, um, about the, the, the weapons. Right? One of the weapons is to put people on a system whereby there is no time for God. Right? And this happens from primary school. From primary school, it starts ready. Right? They're going to put people on a system right, whereby God takes a back seat right, in your life. Right? Unless you are taught to always call on to God. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if this is not being emphasized on, a, on an individual, on a person... Uh, uh, nor is it being not just emphasized, but but being practiced by the entire family around them. It's a bia, bia meaning it's a, it's a it's it's an environment, it's a community of people. Like whereby whereby they hear the azan, your, your parents call you to pray jamaah, to pray together. There is Quran early in the morning. Right? There is dua. There is this. There is that. It's, it's all around you. Right. So you're forced. You know, in as busy as you are, you're forced into. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any problem comes your way, the first thing they tell you to do, go and pray to the gods. Right? That's the first thing. Like any problem, any issue, you're sick, you have headache, you have whatever, go and sujud. Right? The headache goes away. You know, inshallah. <laughs> subhanallah. Yaqeen. This is how people of the past used to go. And whenever they fall sick, the first thing they do, give out in charity. Right? They don't go to the medicine cupboard. The, medicine cupboard, eh? <laughs> right? the first thing, fall sick only, give out in charity. They understand that. Right? Give out in charity, Allah cures you. You know, subhanallah, but you know, Allah I'm not going to go there. Right, but so he says here, right, you would in fact be an oppressor. Knives cut skin and flesh, while phone cuts deen and morals. He points right there, right? 
right there to the aqidah and to morality that's what we spoke about just now about the ruh right, the ruh will be will, will, will be will, the the ruh right will be attacked right to bring it, to bring destruction to the aqidah that's already intrinsic in the ruh the ruh has an intrinsic aqidah eh? because the ruh testified to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before coming to this earth and Allah put his light of goodness in the ruh that's called our conscience right? so there is also a natural morality that is in the ruh right? the ruh can, if the ruh sees you know a pure ruh were to see you know someone being tortured straight away the ruh will reject that without even being told it's wrong you don't have to be told it's wrong uh, when you see someone kick a cat, when you, you see someone, you know, destroy, uh, destroying property, straight away the roh will be, that's wrong. But, but the roh can be weakened and destroyed right, in its aqidah and morality, right, so it is silenced. Right, so when it begins to see all these things around it, it might even take part in it. That's what's going on in our time. Right, so, so, so see, he points to the same thing. Same thing, eh? If, uh, the phone cuts Dean. So he points to the, to the, to the, to the weapon. The phone is a weapon. It's a weapon. Uh, it cuts deen and morals, filling eyes with zina, right? with, with promiscuity. It's everywhere. And calling minds to atheism, right? basically to a godless uh, existence. Right? A godless existence. It makes people so like zombified to an extent. And it's not to an extent, I mean, it's completely zombified. Right? That when they have the, the moment they have free time, flip up the phone. The moment go free time, the moment you have to wait for something, flip out the phone. The moment, you know, subhanAllah, may Allah protect us. It's a difficult test for adults and of course, and even more so for children. Right? It's difficult for adults who, who themselves know what is right and what is wrong. And then for children who are who's still, still learning this world, still coming into this world, to expose them to the evil from the onset, that is uh, oppressive. And wala hawla wala quwata illa billah. It is very scary. On a day of judgment, how many, questions, how many parents will be questioned about exposing their child to evil from a very early age? It makes your heart, makes your heart shake. Eh? How many parents will be questioned? How many fathers will be questioned for bringing into the home evil and putting it in front of the eyes of the children? Right? This, is, this is all amana. It's all trust. It makes your heart stand. It makes, you know, it's, it's trust that Allah has given the parents. And then they bring this into the house and they put it on in front of their children, destroying the soul that is, has been entrusted into that family. That children must be trained in... So now he gives solution. This is the next week we're going to speak about. Right? This is the solution. They must be trained in their deen and character before they are given any tool that can harm them. Right? And this training is going to be until they are old enough to buy their own tool. <laughs> Right, you're not gonna give it to them. They're gonna buy themselves, and even they're gonna buy themselves after the age of eighteen, right? So even if they get the high rate money, still not allowed to buy yourself. All well, kept away from you, right? Because they're unable to handle this. They can't handle it, right? But the the, the calamity is that you go to any primary school right now. Just ask a primary two year, someone in primary two, or in primary one. I don't know. Right, how, how young are they? I, I, I hope kindergartens are not given it. Do kindergartens have phones? <laughs> I don't know. But I know primary school, primary school, lower primary in fact. Right, uh, primary 3, primary, one, primary 2, primary 1, they have iPhones. Why in the world? Can? I, mean, I want to like, strangle these parents. Eh? Like, I mean, I mean, really, like, like, see to them. Why, why in the world does your 8 year old or 7 year old need a smartphone? What's a good reason? What do they learn in school? Maths, English. <laughs> All these things find in books, right? Uh, is there something so fantastic in the phone that it can't be delivered through a book and a human being teaching that? So, so, so I wonder, like, what, 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 is the, what is the very good reason? As a matter my husband, he teaches um, primary school. Uh, primary school. And, 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 and I really apologize if anyone of you um, you feel the the step eh, you know my words if let's if say for you're one of those people who have done that right um there's a whole point of this of this course is when i'm not i'm, I'm not trying to to, to 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 speak or to preach to people who are not on this <laughs> the whole point is to get to those who have done it 
Right? Why? To bring people to clarity of sight, to see things as they are. And you have done it, then you need to, re- you need to undo it immediately. Right? Remove it from their hands. I explained to them, I can explain them nicely, right? and I can say that I made a mistake right? giving you this. You know, of course, they're going to they're gonna give you a big um, you know, uh, <laughs> protest about it. Right? But what has to be done has to be done. It's like, for example, you give a child a me- uh, some medicine, then you realize the wrong medicine. Right? The child likes it, doesn't matter. <laughs> it's the wrong medicine. It's going to hurt the child. It might even kill the child. Right? You put it away straight away. And you don't, you don't say, okay, no, no, you like it, right? Okay, la, okay, la, keep, it, okay, eat, keep, keep eating it. Right? Even though it's, killing, it's, it's causing the child to die a slow death. Right? Sure, you, you put it away. It's the wrong medicine. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you know, I made a mistake. Right? This, you, you should not have taken this at all. You know, subhanallah. Right? So even if they, if they were to argue, no matter how they argue, how they say this, cry all day, you're not getting it. Right? Because I know it, I will be questioned on the day of judgment. And the parents eh, will be questioned on the day of judgment. Why is this given? My husband is a, is a, is a primary school a tutor, you know, subhanAllah. And he, sometimes he, he comes home and he's like, I think we need to have like a big event <laughs> about the dangers of phone and children no, and, 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 and human beings below the age of 18. <laughs> he said that. It's a huge event to, to, to drill to people. Because he's like, he has students like, who are like, what, primary, this, this is low primary, primary two, primary three. Right, primary two, primary three, having the latest, what is it now? iPhone what? It's not following. <laughs> iPhone what, what is it now? 13. Entahlah, eh? 13, eh? 13, eh? The number keeps going out so fast, eh? Mashallah. iPhone, okay, a, a, a primary three, his student has an iPhone 13. He is carrying an old um, Samsung that cost $100 or something like that. <laughs> he bought a cheap one. Right, as long as you have a WhatsApp, WhatsApp, it's good enough. <laughs> WhatsApp to contact people. That's all. That's the phone that he carries around my husband. And he was a his student, primary three, iPhone 13. Right? And the, and the kid is flunking in school. So he's like, okay, I understand if it's a present. <laughs> you know, why in the world does he have it? What did he do so well in his life? Right, that you're giving this to him. And what in, what in the world's going on? You have so much money, give her in charity. Right, there are the kids out there who's dying. You know, and then instead of buying an iPhone 13 for, for, for a nine year old, what are people doing? I don't, you know, you wonder, eh? SubhanAllah. May Allah protect us. Um, Allahumma Sussan Muhammad. I'm going backwards. Okay, so here, I want to go through this a bit. Right, a bit. Eh? <laughs> so I have a lot. Quite, today got 27 slides. So <laughs> getting there, inshallah, ya Allah, ya Allah. But I hope that all of you, you, you understand the, the, the discussion and right, what we're doing. So next week, no matter what, I will have to go into solution. Right? Because the whole point is solution. I'm not supposed to hear about evil, 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 and guess who's scared? <laughs> hey, don't know what is the um, solution right, behind it. Okay, last week we spoke about liberalism. And we went to long talk about it. There's so much to be said, subhanAllah. Feminism. I, I'm engaging in Ustazah. Um, inshallah, I have, not, I have yet to discuss with her the, the details. Right? But she has done extensive research on feminism. Right? She is um, uh, Ustazah Umar Abdullah. Some of you might know her. She's from, she is an Australian from, from Abu Dhabi. Uh, Australian, Australian, but now based in Abu Dhabi. She is a convert. Came, came to Islam, spent some time, since spent a, long, a lot of time in, in um, I think in Syria and then in, uh, in, in, in Yemen, right? And so she has done extensive, extensive research, right, on feminism, right, and how it has led to um, religious and moral degradation in the woman. Because you look at the hadith, uh, Jibril, right, that it is the slave girl, right, who will give birth. To her master or to her mistress, which Habib Abqani points us to that the main people, the first people who will be targeted, right, the first souls who will be targeted are the souls of women. They are right at the, 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 the they are right at the front, you know, of the attack. Right? They're the ones who will be attacked left, right, all around the women. Right? And feminism is one of the biggest uh, uh, one of their biggest weapons right, to destroy the woman because they know if you destroy the woman they destroy all right? the women are attacked and this tells us mashallah, how our religion also shows us the importance of the woman right? if the woman is educated 
and there's some always point to that. Educate your women. Educate them in the religion. Educate them about the hereafter. Educate, educate, educate in the correct way of the Prophet But it's only the neglect of that that women go into whatever they go into, and that feminism is one of the one of the culprits, eh? the biggest culprits, like of the destruction like, of aqidah and morality in women, and then from there the neglect of children. Then it just spiral down. Right? So it's, it's just a, a, a terrible, vicious cycle. Right? All the to what we are seeing today. Because of the attack on women, that has happened decades ago, and even centuries ago, the, the, the attack on women has been there. You know, subhanallah. So for feminism, I will not go so much into it because I do plan to have this series, uh, inshallah, uh, with Sazza Um Abdullah. Um, inshallah, I will discuss it for inshallah next week um, the, the details about it, and she'll go into it. Uh, but just as an as a, as a you know a statement about feminism, right? Why is so you know? The thing about feminism is that, and I think about all of these attacks is that they would always be packaged as righteous. All of the web, no one's going to come up to you and put the pistol in your head. That's not how Dajjal works. Eh? <laughs> Dajjal is going to serve you dessert and then put in the dessert poison. Uh, that's how Dajjal works. Uh, it's, not, it's not outright, you know, put a knife to your head or a, or a pistol to your head and kill you. No. Dajjal, Dajjal will befriend you, bring you in, sweet stuff. <laughs> it's, there, will always, there will always be this pretense of righteousness. Because human beings seek righteousness. It's something that is innate, that is inherent in our soul. Our soul seeks righteousness. So if you are tricked by Dajjal, that's how, that's how we went to the hadith from the first lesson. Dajjal has a jannah and a nar. Right? وَجَنَّتُهُ نَار وَنَارُهُ جَنَّةُ right? his, his, his jannah is fire and his, fi- and, and, and his, and his uh, fire is jannah. This is what he's going to do. So it will always come with the pretense of righteousness. And that will draw the most sincere of people. Right? So it's not that people who are involved in this are evil. No. They are, this is the whole thing of this is what Dajjal means. The one who, um, the deceiver. He deceives. So the most innocent and in fact the most sincere of hearts who want to fight for the cause you know, of women who are being abused, women who are this, who are that, it's mashallah. You know, mashallah. They, they, they're very sincere in this. And they see feminism and they see they're doing something good, aren't they? <laughs> Is there something good being done there? Is there? Is there? And if you ask someone, can you define feminism? Define it. I mean, you've heard the word all the time, right? Define it. What's feminism? It keeps changing. <laughs> You're confused, right? That's one of the traits of Dajjal. It's not clear. It's not clear at all. Right? Dajjal goes under ambiguity so as... That's how they deceive. Uh, so you, and confuse right, people. You don't, you don't know what you're actually getting into. And before you know it, it pushes you to an evil. The principle in Islam... Of course, you went through the principle in the Hadith... Right, the halal is clear, the haram is clear, between them there are great matters. The, another principle in Islam, these are all from the Prophet and from the Quran. Right? Another principle in Islam is that to know if something is evil or good, look at the end of it. Okay? Right? So if it's a spectrum, when you went to this with LGBT, right? The spectrum of things. Okay, look at the end. Is the end good or evil? Uh, if the end can bring, if it, the extreme of it, the extreme of it, if the extreme of it is evil, then it's evil. Because khutuwat is shaytan. Khutuwat is shayatin. The steps of shaytan. Right? So the f- beginning is righteous. But look at the end. What has happened in the end of it? What has happened? So you see, you know, at the end of it, um, it does come out lesbianism. It has come out. Um, a complete uh, a destruction of morals has come up through feminism. Right? Also, you find that at the end of it, with regards to the Muslim world, right, those who would reject laws of Islam outrightly, right? so laws of hijab, the sunnah of Rasulullah um, even even the laws of jama'ah prayer, right? the imam and ma'amum, and so on. very, very basic laws in Islam. So this is what the end has done. It has completely stripped Islam 
strand by strand, and it's, it's in the hadith of, it's in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Islam will be removed strand by strand until nothing is left. Right, so you see the you, you see the extreme of it. So you look at the extreme of it, you see okay, that is what it can put this 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 ideology can lead to. That gives you a red light. Don't go there, and right, because it will be footsteps right towards there, and 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 also don't go there because. What don't we not? What don't we have in Islam? Let us not address all these um, injustices, right? It's already been addressed in Islam. Our the mother of the believer, Sayyidina Khadija, at the forefront of it. Sayyidina Fatima, at the forefront of it. Right? If you hold on to the laws of Islam, halas, it's done. Right? You 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 overcome this, you know, Subhanallah. And inshallah, inshallah, when we go through the the entire, the entire course of feminism, we'll go deeper into women issues. Right, because and we have to do an entire course on it because we women are being attacked. Right? So we need to have our own course on specifically the women and what are the weapons specifically against women. Subhanallah. Um, then you have atheism. Right? Atheism is uh, one of the one of their attacks. <laughs> right? um, basically, atheism um, brings people um, the, the entire push for atheism right, is first and foremost. Through the lifestyle, there has been there has been um, uh, there has been uh, what do you say? The lifestyle that is widespread. Okay, the lifestyle that has been imposed on our zaman, the lifestyle, the lifestyle of godlessness. Right, so wake up, go to work, go to school, come back, relax, watch something, sleep. Right, and so many people get swept into this lifestyle. Right, so quickly, right, that, as you mentioned earlier on, that God gets pushed aside. That only when they have time, and if they have time, right, they put some time for their, uh, for their akhirah, if they, if, even if they, if they feel that they need to or they have to. Right, and, and the majority of people have gone into a situation whereby they don't see any importance in putting aside time right, for their eternal life in the hereafter. So akhirat, though, mashallah. That is our, our that should be our priority. It's prime in front of us, right? But now it's behind, right? In a society like this, of course, lots of entertainment, mindlessness. This is something that is, you know, heedlessness or mindlessness, heedlessness or mindlessness. The entire, you know, just going into a zombie mode. This is also of the attacks of the time, and right? to pull people so so as to pull people. Right into mind control. Okay, I'm not like what's mind control sci-fi. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm serious. I'm very serious. I am very serious. The minds are being controlled. Right? And don't think mind control is like they hypnotize you, <laughs> you know, and they're gonna make you do stuff. You know, no, no. It is it is the entire brainwashing of a whole society that when to the point whereby when they say anything they want to say, straight with these people will defend it. Right? Straight away, they will, they, will, they will just obey whatever is being said out there. There's one example actually about this. But I want you all to think, inshallah. Okay, um, let me see. I'm going to go through this for, for this lessons for this today and tomorrow. The modes of attack, eh? devices, media and education. Education. Yes, education is one of the main weapons right? to, destroy the <laughs> to destroy the masses. People, people love education. They love education. But education is the forefront in the attacks. Uh, so Habib Abu Qalani said, there will be a naqs right, fi ta'alim. Right, there, there will be a deficiency in education, right, in teaching and education. It will be there. Right, they will attack from there. Right, subhanallah. Yeah. So inshallah, um, I think we are supposed to take, take Q&A. <laughs> right, but I want to stop for Isha. Let me see the questions here. Um... <laughs> Someone said Wi Fi not enough. Okay, no. okay, anyway, um <laughs> uh Allahumma Sadi Ala Sidina Muhammad. Okay, never mind. The Darzara girls are talking to me. Um uh Sayyidina Muhammad. All the family members who offer the mobile phones to the child. That's the thing. It's the thing. They don't see it as a weapon, nor do they see the soul being hurt by it. They don't see it. The thing about it is that the older generation got hit. They got hit so hard, they didn't, didn't have any direction back then. They didn't realize what hit them, the older 
generation right our generation inshallah inshallah our generation there is an awakening right so the old generation tv was brought into their lives you know um uh, certain cultures were brought into their lives right? they were basically heavily influenced by all these things and they just were swept into it without realizing what's going on right our generation we're taking a step back and we know what the previous generation have done you know may allah may allah you know um raise their station and forgive them for what they didn't know happened to them basically they were hit without knowing that they were being hit okay so so we have no excuse because allah has allowed for us to look at this situation right look at what's going on around us and to learn to reject right maybe the old generation it was not as clear right no maybe maybe there was not much um guidance with regards to it maybe not enough voices were speaking up against it right so and even maybe their their own religious leaders were themselves in it right so how does a society you know pull themselves out if the religious leaders themselves are not speaking up against it see that i say may allah forgive them and and raise them this a reward and and much of the the generation has passed has passed on <laughs> you know mashallah right so so for the, for the for the older ones who they're giving it to your child right how you tell gently without hurting their feelings some will not under the consequences of it right it's say once a week aja right <laughs> subhanallah right so if you if you can share with them what you have learned the whole point of this day course is where to share with them what you have learned about this and you can share with them right the inshallah i will go into games i will go into videos i will go into chat Okay, the three main things that comes to the mobile phone, eh? The three things. Yeah, these are terrible weapons right, against the, the the adult. They are terrible against the adult. Eh? Don't think of you all. You all know I can play a game and not be affected. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Or so I can chat. I'm an adult. I can chat with strangers online and not be affected. You go and how many people? How many? How many adults go into depression from chatting? Adults, eh? Right, they chat with people online. They they get what's 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 the, what's the term now? Apa lah? I did I I thought I I I thought it was so funny. Catch cat apa? Catfish, <laughs> catch it or something. Catfish, catfish. Uh, adults, no 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 kids right? Adults are getting it. Can catfish? What's catfish? The fish. <laughs> um um. Basically, someone someone strings on a person, a fake personality. Is it working correctly? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> someone, someone fake, right? <laughs> you want to correct me? Someone fake online, catfishes. Why is it called catfish? <laughs> Pretend. <laughs> because cats have whiskers. <laughs> Good answer, man. Because cats have whiskers. <laughs> okay, so pretend to be someone online, catfishing. <laughs> it's called catfishing, yeah, because basically the cat. Pretend to be a fish. I think so. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Um, but anyway, this is something. See, adults are, are 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 getting catfished. Eh? Adults are being are being scammed in Singapore. How many scam cases? So you and this is all under what chat chat. It's all chat. Fool. I mean, adults. Not unless you say, "What oh, is adults all? You know, so gullible." <laughs> you look into the cases. You're looking at lawyers. I who got scammed. Eh? You're looking at um really big shots. CEOs and so on, women who are needy, you know, of attention and love and affection. So there are men out there who do this, and what do they do? Scam, right? They catfish, they scam, and it can even just be for fun, just to get people to love them. So they they play a part. It's a virtual, it's a virtual, um, it's a virtual relationship with someone who does not exist. They just play, you know, and then and then they go into drama. And they go into all kinds of things, which pulls people, pushes people into 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 depression and 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 destruction, and even worse if it happens to the akida, they get influenced right, by that person in the morality. No, Allah, 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 Try to explain to them what you have learned, right? Try really, really hard to explain to them what you have learned, right? Um, as gently as possible, 
and what you can say to them is that is that you know what's going on right now right is mm, way more harmful than what they went through when they when when you know in their days and that's true that's true you look at the cartoons today and the cartoons back then uh, you can really see the, the stark difference in the cartoons today and the cartoons uh, back then eh? you know so 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 you can you can say to them that the, the, the damage is really really is real lah, is real right? in 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 all these games and everything you don't want them engaged in it try try your best right to explain to them try your best that this is the the way of um of of upbringing that you have chosen for your family right and then something that you hope that they that they respect lah you know subhanallah i know i know i know like my 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 own cousin zamaria right that her i mean on her on the parents side they like to watch cartoons her father her mother and they do watch cartoons ah that's all they watch she don't actually watch like you know movies or whatever <laughs> really mashallah <laughs> right but so zamaria and her husband Mr. hashim they have no media in their home no tv nothing uh, so my auntie you no know, basically she's my my cousin from my auntie lah right, so my auntie respects that of her family's decision you know that this is what they have chosen for their children uh, they respect that about her about their daughters lah about their their, their children they have, they have chosen this this lifestyle for their children right, so they respect lah so if you can you know it's very gently speak to them and say that you don't want to compromise in this but think about it is that if you are putting your kids with your parents to be babysat to, to, to babysit them you need i mean i mean this is the easiest thing for them to do <laughs> right so if you are choosing or you if you are going to a lifestyle but you need your parents help <laughs> to babysit then um it's their time <laughs> right and it's it's it's, it's, it's the easiest thing to do so then then you have to reflect onto yourself and think and see you know should you not do that you know in in babysitting Masha, you can't you can't put you can't. I mean, it's hard to impose something when someone's doing you a favor. They're doing you favors, right? So at the end of the day, if you really cannot control, you try your best to control. Then make sure you do your wirid. Make sure you do all the recitations to try and nullify any negative effects. As mentioned in the first lecture, like a drop of goodness can nullify an ocean of evil. But you don't jump to the ocean of evil as far as you can. You don't jump in. Right? But if you have to, uh, if you have to take off it. Right, then try and nullify it with the uh, with the good. Okay. Now, um, um, uh, what do we do if we outwardly don't prescribe the famous elements? However, our upbringing and education led us to hold them these views subconsciously, which in turn affects our behavior and actions, such as and is destroying our homes. Yeah, there is that's what's happened, lah. Yes, yes, exactly the on the nail. Yes, it has come into it has come to us without us realizing. We actually carry feminist ideologies, right? Because it has been it has been um, seeped into the education system. Even not just feminist ideologies, even atheist ideologies, right? Even liberal ideologies, right? It's it's not it's not it's not served to you with a label, eh? <laughs> right? It's all put in the textbooks, right? And then from there you consume, right? So it's, as, as I said, it's, it's a dessert that has poison placed inside, right? So it's not going to be told to you there's poison in there. If they told you dessert, consume it, consume it, right, and there's a poison all inside there. Right, so you see that there has to be a detoxing, lah. <laughs> right, there has to be a cleansing of ideologies, and the cleansing happens. In the next week, we're going to the solution. The cleansing happens by going back and studying our fardu ain properly, over and over and over and over again, studying the foundations of our religion. Right. The more you do this, the more you do this, the more the 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 the, the, the clearer your 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 you know your your mind, and you remove all these toxins, right? Because the religion purifies, you know, physically and and, and spiritually, the religion purifies. And of course, going to the Quran, going to the Hadith, going to all these things are always of purification. Alhamdulillah, for a purifying religion. Alhamdulillah, lidin nur. Lima in tahur wa dinin nur. So do I like you said before we do eh? Alhamdulillah. Lima in tahur wa dinin nur. Alhamdulillah for water that is purifying and for religion that is illuminating. Subhanallah. So it can be undone. Right? Never think that evil is more powerful than goodness. I right? never let yourself for, for a moment think that. Right? Because we know that a person can 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 do can 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 kill a hundred a, a, a hundred people and be forgiven in an instant. 
We know that, right? Story of the man who killed a hundred people. And then tabat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgiven. Right? Someone can, do, can, can be completely destroyed by the system. And a moment of realization and crying out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can undo all of that. Can be done. But the whole point is to realize. Shaitan will, will try and stop that. As how he tries to stop Taubat. Uh, he tries to stop. Because he knows that an entire, you know, 100 years of work <laughs> can, can be gone in, in a moment by someone's Taubat. And to uh, work of Shaitan. Lah. <laughs> 100 years of shaitan, shaitanic, shaitanic work can be, can, be, can be completely gone to dust. Like, in the, in the, nothing just by a moment of Taubat. Like, of repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it's not doom and gloom. Right? Alhamdulillah. Goodness. So cliche, but goodness always prevails. <laughs> it's, it's always above uh, evil. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Okay. Um, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Someone talking about homeschooling, eh? <laughs> if, you, if you know my, my views of homeschooling, mashallah. Um, Alhamdulillah. They say if you don't, if you don't trust anyone, then do it yourself, right? <laughs> Okay, inshallah. Uh, we we'll stop there for today. For not today, we we'll stop. We we'll stop there for now to pray isha. Okay, then um, we'll continue at what time? Nine. <laughs> Nine what? Nine people here. Anyone wants to give me a time? Ten o'clock. You ten o'clock. You dah tidur dah, Marina. Ten, nine, someone to give me give me a timing. Nine fifteen, but talk nine fifteen you want. <laughs> Finish up three minutes. <laughs> Wudu, everything's on. Huh? So nine upper. Nine ten. <laughs> nine fifteen was too short. I'm looking at nine twenty. <laughs> nine twenty, nine twenty, okay? Nine twenty, inshallah. Nine twenty. Okay, nine thirty a bit too long now. <laughs> nine twenty. Nine twenty, inshallah. Okay, inshallah, I'll see you all inshallah soon. Any questions, put it on the padlet, eh? Padlet, padlet.